This is Colin Selleck of Binghamton University. This video lecture is on linear impulse and momentum for a system of particles. It's from chapters 15.2 to 15.3 of the book Dynamics by R.C. Hebbler. Today's objectives, you will be able to apply the principle of linear impulse and momentum to a system of particles and understand the conditions for conservation of momentum. Today's activities include defining linear impulse and momentum for a system of particles, defining the conservation of linear momentum, and some problem solving. So first, a brief review of linear impulse and momentum for a single particle from last chapter 15.1. This is similar to work in energy where you have an initial state and a final state, and we call those states 1 and 2. So the equation that we came up with last lecture was that the momentum, which is the mass times the velocity at state 1, plus the sum of all the impulsive forces integrated over time is equal to the mass times the velocity at state 2. Well, now we're going to extend this to a system of particles. Here you see a system of particles here, and all the little f sub i's are internal forces acting between the particles as they collide or interact with each other. The internal forces, little s sub i between the particles, always occurs in pairs with equal magnitude and opposite directions. Thus, the internal impulses all sum to zero. So this big f sub i is an external force. So we can expand this equation right here from a single particle to a system of particles. And what we'll say is that the sum of all the individual particles' masses times their velocity at state 1 plus the sum of all the external forces integrated over time, S of i, is equal to the sum of all the individual masses times their velocity at state 2. Now let's talk about the center of mass. Uh, for our system of particles, we can define a fictitious center of mass of an aggregate particle of mass m total, where m total is the sum of all the particles. So we have a system here with all these particles. So what we can say is that the total mass will define as the sum of all the individual masses. So using the principle of linear momentum, we can say that the aggregate velocity is equal to the sum of all the individual masses times their, their velocity divided by m total. So this would be like the velocity of the center of mass of this collection of particles that you see here. And furthermore, we can say that the position vector r which points to the center of mass is equal to the sum of all the individual masses times their distance, our position vector rather, divided by the total mass, which is, of course, the sum of all the individual masses. So basically what we're saying here is that we can define a center of gravity for all these particles, or the g, and the, the velocity of g can be determined by summing all the momentums and dividing by total mass. And the position of G can be determined by summing all the m sub i's times their position vectors and dividing by the total mass. Now a special case when the sum of external impulses acting on a system of objects is zero, that linear impulse momentum equation we just saw for a system of particles reduces to this. So here we're saying uh, external impulses are zero. So our equation then becomes a summation of the momentum of each individual particle at state one is equal to momentum at state two, which is the sum of all the um, individual masses times their velocities at the second state. So if the impulse is zero, there are no external forces acting on a system, we call that the conservation of linear momentum, and that's the equation for it.
So let's do an example. Here we have two rail cars. Uh, rail car A has a mass of 20 megagrams and car B has a mass of 15 megagrams. And the velocities are shown here. A is moving to the right at 3 meters per second. B is moving to the left at 1.5 meters per second. So find the speed of car A after collision if the cars collide and rebound such that B moved to the right with a speed of 2 meters per second. So after collision, we know the velocity of B is 2 meters, two, uh, two meters per second to the right. Also find the average impulsive force between the cars if the collision takes place in half a second. So we'll use our conservation of linear momentum to find the velocity of car A after the collision. Remember here, here's a case where all internal impulses cancel. And then we'll use the principle of impulse and momentum to find the impulsive force by looking at only one car. So we're going to treat this two ways. We're going to treat it as a system of particles, both of those together. And then to find the average impulsive force, we're going to break it up and, and just treat one particle. So let's do that. So here's sort of a visual of what's going on. A is moving to the right at 3 meters per second. B is moving to the left at 1.5 meters per second. So that's state 1. So after collision, that's state 2. We're looking for the velocity of A after collision, and we're told that the velocity of B after collision is 2 meters per second. So when we treat this as a system, the car is together as a system of particles, then there's no external forces, so there's no impulse. There's no external impulse of forces. So we can say that there's conservation of linear momentum in the x direction. So one of the first things we need to do is, is define our direction, our coordinate system. So I'm going to say x is positive to the right. Now our conservation of linear momentum equation is the sum of all the individual particles times their velocity at state 1 is equal to the sum of all the individual particles times their velocity at state 2. So in this case we have two particles. We're told that A has a mass of 20,000 kilograms times its velocity which is 3 meters per second and it's positive to the right plus the mass of car B which is 15,000 kilograms times its velocity. Now it's minus 1.5 meters per second because it's going to the right. So that's state 1. So that will equal state 2, which is the mass of car A, which is still 20,000 kilograms, times its velocity. That's what we're looking for. So that would be the velocity at state 2 of car A, plus 15,000 times the velocity of car B after collision, which is 2 meters per second, and it's positive because it's to the right. So we can solve this for the velocity of A after collision. It comes out to be 0 0.375 meters per second. Now we're also asked to find the average impulsive force on car A. So now we're going to break up the system of particles into a single particle that has an impulsive force F acting on it over a period of time, and that time was we were told was half a second. So the equation for impulse and momentum is the mass of A times the velocity of A at state 1 plus the integral of all the forces, which is only one in this case, is force F integrated over time from T1 to T2 is equal to uh, the mass of car A times its velocity after collision, which we just found was 0.375 meters per second. So we're going to assume that there's an average force that's constant acting over half a second. In this case, we're asked to find the average force. So we can say that F here is a constant. So the mass of A is 20,000. The initial velocity of A is 3 meters per second, positive to the right, plus the average force, which is this one right here. Um, times the time that it acts, which is 0.5 seconds, is equal to the mass of A, which is 20,000 kilograms, times this velocity after collision, which is 0.375, and positive to the right. And you can solve this for the average force, and it's a 105 kilonewtons. So this example covered two cases. This is the conservation of linear momentum up here.
that's because there are no external forces acting on the particles, the system of particles of both cars. The second part of the problem was impulse momentum. We broke up the system into one particle and assumed there was some average force acting on it uh, over some period of time. This concludes 15.2 to 15.3, Linear Impulse and Momentum for a System of Particles. Next up, Chapter 15.4, Impact.